Long Island Backstory with Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Good afternoon, I'm Gary Jacobs, and welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory, where we film at the Cablevision Studios in lovely Hop Hog, Long Island, New York, also known sometimes as Islandia. Um, my next guest today is Percival Dyer. Uh, he's from Freeport. He went to uh, York College for his BA, and then his master's at Morgan State University, and then PhD at Howard University. Needless to say, he's a good guy. Unfortunately, he didn't follow the rules of guests on Long Island Backstory, which was never dress better than the guest, and I try not to have people smarter than me because then it makes me look dumber. But anyway, we got a, sm a smart, good-looking guy here, a very uh, smiley guy, and you'll see why his personality uh, is so important. Uh, he served in the State Department in the Clinton and Bush administrations as Asian Pacific Economic Council Coordinator from 1998 to 2002. Uh, he was also part of the security detail at the White House during the same time time frame. In 2003, he moved back home uh, from Washington to Freeport. I don't know, every, everybody's supposed to be migrating south. You, yeah, that's you, right. You came I, back I, so I, I meaning you are a glutton right. for punishment. Yes. Uh, and then he started a nonprofit organization in green technology and green health. In 2015, right. he started a radio show on radio station WGBB, uh, which is talk uh, and music, and which is why he's here today, because uh, my doctor, well, and I will give a shameless plug, Dr. Howard Grill on Ocean <laughs> Avenue in Freeport, when I was driving there last week, and I was going through the uh, the radio. I came across his show, and I said, "Wow, th this this is a great show. It's different." I personally like talk radio myself, but there's only so much CNN and Fox News uh, you can Correct. listen to. So uh, it's nice to sometimes get uh, educated on some of these things. And I, I was like, "Wow, this is stuff I didn't know." Mm -hmm. I got to reach out to this guy and get him on my show, and he's gracious enough to uh, well, agree to come. That. So, first of all, thank you for. Uh, Coming on okay, uh, Long, I, I Long Island Backstory. I appreciate you having me on the show. This is going to be a pleasure for me. Okay, Thank great. You well, you didn't, we haven't done the show yet. We'll see what kind of pleasure it is all right. <laughs> when we get into it. So first of all, tell me, what yes. made you start a, start a radio show? I mean, your other career in the White House and all these things. Right. What made you start a, a radio show? Well, you know, what I wanted to do was I wanted to get the, the nonprofit and the idea of doing green technology and green health out into the public. And basically that's the best, one of the best ways to do it because with the radio show you can have different guests on, you can have uh, a certain format, and you can get the, uh, the message out to the public. And that's one of, the, one of the main reasons why I wanted to do that show. So did you have any prior experience in broadcasting before this? Never. All right, so you just, uh, were you like a talk show? You listened to talk show, radio? I listened, I listened uh, you know, imitated, and, and <laughs> hopefully, you know, hopefully everything will, will, will you know, keep growing and doing well so right. you know so far so good good so what, what is the process like dealing with the uh, FCC now you were a government guy but still yeah. a government agency uh, yeah, what, yeah. tell me what, what that was like because I'm on cables well, and I don't have to deal with I'm, any I'm, of that regulatory uh, well, nonsense. I'm going to be honest with you the FCC is pretty rough um, you know we, you just have to make sure that when you when you put a radio show together you're not you're violating any rules you know, you have so many things that you have to be conscious of when you're doing a radio show. Like the George Carlin you know. list of all the words you can't yeah, say, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the and younger George, people are like, what are we talking about? But George, uh, George right? has got it down pat. <laughs> trust me, you know, you, you know, I I even had to bleep out something two weeks ago. So you know, it's it's really hard. Uh, it's not it's not an easy process. But the good news is is that if you have a good staff and they can catch some of the things that you don't see when you're you know, hosting, and I'm sure you've experienced that many times yourself. Oh, I got a great staff. You know, the host so. is the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what they tell me, too. Yeah. Thank God I'm on public <laughs> access and the whole show would be bleeped out sometimes, exactly. especially when I'm talking about family court, but exactly. I digress. Well, 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 yeah. So, you know, so everything is well so far. So I'm, I'm grateful for So you made for it through that whole, that, whole, uh, through. that whole process. I made it through. You got your show. I got my show, and everything's going well. So tell me about the focus of your show and what makes uh, your show different because it is different than right. most of I guess like you know Cumulus owns a bunch Absolutely. of states ABC they Absolutely. have all the big you know the, the big players out Absolutely. there although we have some other smaller ones in Suffolk but well you know what it is is that when you're talking about green technology you're talking about anything from solar panels to greening a home to the environment to politics and what we do is we, we encompass everything. So we will one day we'll be talking about somebody, um, you know, dealing with cotton, believe it or not. And then another day we'll talk about somebody that's dealing with um, some kind of problem, uh, whether it be the 
uh, the, the, the Environmental Protection Agency or this, that, and other. So we have a lot of topics that we do discover on that, on that show, and we have a lot of green doctors that come onto that show, and they do a lot of uh, great things. They give a lot of service to the community that people are not aware of, which is what we do. We make people aware of what's going on out there, the services that are out there for you. And it's not necessarily from the pharmaceutical side, it's from the natural which, side. Which is so, important, right? That it's not important. coming from the big, That's right. big business. That's right. It's, it's a different, because you're, you're a smaller Correct. Uh, station, so Correct. you don't need all the huge Correct. dollars to, to but, keep running. But you see, those doctors are important because they really don't want to do any harm. And you know, as you are well aware, if, you know, sometimes uh, a process like chemotherapy can really wipe you out. So those, kind of, those are the kind of doctors that I have on my show. And they come on and they give alternatives to, to the medicine that we are aware of. And that's right. it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, which is important because, you know, like they always say, you know, you go to an oncologist, what are they going to do? They're going right. to say, all right, we do chemotherapy. You go right. to a surgeon, right. they're going to say, we're going to cut it out. Exactly. You, know, you go to uh, you know, right. a radiation oncologist, they're going to use laser beams Absolutely. or radiation to get Absolutely. it out. But I think, you know, a green, now when you have the green person on though, does that mean that they don't even look at the possibility of conventional medicine? Well, well, well sometimes they, they use things in conjunction with the, with, the, with the medicine that you're aware of. So it can help the process. So it's, it's always good to have, a, a, you know, your doctors, you have to choose your doctors carefully, and everyone knows that. But you have to make sure that everyone is aware of what's going on. And if you're, you're taking chemotherapy, sometimes something else can help you know, help the process along, and maybe you don't have to do as much chemotherapy if you're doing one of the natural, um, you know, products or whatever the case is. So that's what you want to do. Now, the next thing that makes my television show different as well is because, let's be honest, you know, green technology, green health is exciting for some of us, but not all of us. So one of the things that I did do was I tried to incorporate music, I tried to incorporate comedians, um, you know, politics, you know, everything else into the show. And we just have to some, keep the listener just to, just to keep everybody kind of excited to to listen to the show. So we have some you know we have some very exciting you know authors coming on to the show. We have um, musicians that are coming on to the show all of the time. Established artists. I just had Dior DeBarge on my show um, from the DeBarge family. I have a guy named Roger uh, Roger Kennedy. He's an author. He's um, he has a nonprofit himself. He does boys and blazers. He uh, he does all of these things with these people in the community in in Atlanta, Georgia. Because my show just got syndicated. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You know, That's which is a big news. deal. Um, I have Nassim Sadiq, Anthony Walker, and Joanna Hale McGee, Tiffany Col Coleman McGee, who's uh, up for a Stella Award, and her CD was up for a Grammy. You know, we have Jason Little and Janine Brown, who has a book on relationships coming out, Fatima, who has her own clothing line, and you know, it, there's a lot of people who are uh, coming onto my show, and also established artists who are coming onto my show, and you know, the show is doing really well now. So, you know, it, it keeps everybody abreast of what's going on in terms of the green technology, green health world, and it keeps everybody excited. So, Parcel, how many hours a week is your show? Right now, it's uh, two hours a week. And when is uh, it? Saturday and Sunday from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. right now. And we're looking for more hours. Right. So, what you, is it that you're passionate about the green, the music? I mean, what, what, what is it? I mean, I'm assuming it's your show, so you put on stuff right. that you like. Right. And, right. uh, well, you know, I was a music major. Um, in, in, in undergraduate school, so I want to okay. give artists a chance to come out there and showcase their, their talent, you know. And of course, my mother and father came from Jamaica, so they, they always had, had an incorporated lifestyle of green, healthy uh, products all around the house. So, Queens? Yeah, well, and on Jamaica Long Island. Queens? No, no, no. Jamaica Queens. <laughs> I'm saying, know, I didn't know Jamaica the, Queens the, the, was known real for Jamaica. I didn't know Jamaica <laughs> Queens was known for green technology and, uh, and that kind of music. Right, 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 right. So, no, no, they, 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 they really really did well and um, they brought I think they raised me up to uh, to to carry on that kind of tradition right so tell me you, you had a guest on uh, the show dr. Howard Robbins yes dr. Howard Robbins is is an extremely important individual he was up by the way for a uh, Nobel Peace Prize at one point and he goes around the world and he uh, he is a specialist in ozone therapy which now, is well ozone therapy now. I thought we're losing it, the ozone. Let's let's no. Well, let's let I would let him really tell you about ozone therapy. But what ozone therapy does in terms of a layman standpoint is it takes your oxygen level from O2 to O3, and then what it does it actually cures 
whatever you have ailing your body. It, it, it actually attacks it. And that's the best way that I can describe it. But I mean, like, what kind of really things? What I mean, skin disease or internal disease? Both. Both. You really have to, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend for him to come onto your show so he can explain to the audience exactly what How do does. they do it? How do you get ozone well, into you, your body? What you do is you take that intravenously. And it's liquid? It's I thought a, ozone's like air. A, no, right. It's a gas. But it's a gas. Okay. So what it does, it goes straight into your, into your veins and it really goes around the body and it attacks whatever is ailing you. Now, he's claiming that, and he doesn't like to use the word cure, but he says that this can help you with cancer and, and a whole host of different things like sickle cell anemia and so on and so forth. So, so I will let him tell you about his ozone therapy more and this is Dr. Howard Robbins, this I'm sure, Dr. so Howard people can Google Robbins. him, and they can put your show in, I guess, and, and see the show that, Absolutely. that he, and this is, you know, something that I would think that it's hard for somebody like this to get out into the public. Cor correct, because, you know, the, because, because uh, again, who wants him out there? Because I mean, again, the drug companies don't want him out that's there. That's right. You know, that's right. You know, big pharma doesn't want him out there. He doesn't want, because ozone's probably cheap, right? You can pull it out of the environment, cheap. right? It's so, very cheap. So, you know, these are the things that have been around since World War II. Well, you know, we hear about this stuff, right? People go, oh, there's a cure for cancer, right. there's a uh, right. way to fix energy, Correct. but the big business keep, It'll block you every time. Keeps it keeps it down. Every time. So, uh, so that's interesting. Now talk about uh, Craig McFarlane who uh, Well Craig McFarlane was one of my You told guests. me about I didn't, I didn't really yeah. know anything he's about a, him. He's a guest that was on my, on my radio show and he, he actually knew George Bush uh, Sr. A very good friend of mine and he is a, uh, an Olympic gold medalist from Canada and you know he has a he's an established author he's a, a motivator a motivational speaker and you know and all this kind of thing and he he does some amazing amazing things out, out there in Canada um, you know he he'll, he'll just get on a pair of skis and just do it up you know so I, I always admire Craig for what he what he's been able to accomplish because he's blind That's all right. so he's an amazing amazing individual and uh, if you ever get a chance to look him up you know please do because he can uh, he can he can really give you a lot of information out there about about the green and green health and, and technology and all that kind of stuff. But he's right. a very good guy. And one of the guests that that uh, that caught my really caught my attention when I was doing my, my research on you mm -hmm. was uh, Sylvia Beljansky, the yes. daughter of Dr. Beljansky. Yes. I don't think I remember his. Uh, his his first name, but uh, yes, before uh, I ask you, tell you about that and how right. you you were introduced to them. Right. Let's just go ahead and show this. Uh, let's go ahead and show the audience this clip because oh, well, when I when I saw this clip, I said, "Man, well, why doesn't this have like millions of, of views?" Absolutely. So let's go ahead and show this clip. Has been rightly called the father of environmental medicine. Says, to me, Dr. Beljansky was a real pioneer. Uh, it, I was very surprised how his work was uh, very, very intuitive and very advanced. The research that he did really underlies the modern fields of environmental medicine. I'd call him a finder above all else. Being a researcher doesn't really mean much. The Belchensky legacy is a film about innovation, about adversity, and of a family coming together to offer life-saving discoveries to the world. Charting the life and work of the father of environmental medicine, renowned molecular biologist Mirko Belgensky reveals his passion for science and the challenges he faced when trying to bring his cancer-fighting natural extracts to the service of mankind. The story has modest beginnings in Serbia, Belgensky's birthplace, and weaves through his impassioned research at the Pasteur Institute in Paris, France, where he made his most profound discoveries. Prominent international scientists pay tribute to Belchensky's innovative work around the environmental impact on the secondary structure of DNA. Despite being persecuted in France, Dr. Mirko Belchensky's heritage continues today through the poignant stories of his wife and daughter who have committed their lives to continuing his discoveries the Belchinsky legacy lives on. So, as everybody can see in, in that clip, I mean, 
this is like uh, earth, you know, earth changing. Stuff. It has changed people's life. Tell me how you found out about them. How did you get her on uh, the daughter on, on your show? Tell, right. tell us, tell right. us about this. Well, you know, I was blessed to have her because, as you can see, this was. Uh, I don't know how it, it, it skipped the, 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 uh, the, the U.S. press, but I'm sure if you were looking at the BBC, you would have seen this. Now, how I ran across her, I, just by chance. Um, again, I met her at a, uh, at a forum, and she and the, uh, the, uh, another doctor were speaking about this cure for cancer. Now, everybody says they have a cure for cancer, but Medical Beljansky was one of the first people to, to, to tackle this from an environmental standpoint, not just uh, you know, uh, something else. He, he was able to tackle it from that point. Now, they're affiliated with Columbia University, Kansas University. So it's not San some quack State. doctor or so witch this is, doctor. No, or this is, is nothing of that this kind. This is serious. This is serious stuff. And they're, they're able to, um, to, to talk about this thing from, from that standpoint. And they're amazing. And that entire story is amazing because the president of France was cured of cancer. And the people of France wanted that cure, and they were exiled from the country. And I'm good. I, we got them. I'm like, wow, <laughs> you got to be kidding. But she sued in the uh, in the IMF, the uh, the not the IMF, the I, the ICJ, and she won, and she won the case. And so the uh, the mother, I believe, is still is. Of course, unfortunately, he passed, but the mother is still here, and she's she's here, and. You know, it's a wonderful story, and they're they're out here in New York, thank goodness, and you can go and see them. And um, you know, uh, I guess you know, engage them in conversation. So, do, do people call in on your show? People call in my show all the time. Okay, so this, I mean, this must have been a big uh, a big show for you. Yeah, yeah, this was a good show. This was a very good show, and you know, again, I, I was just you know, tickled to death that I had her on the show. So now we, we talked about the music aspect of it. You mentioned all the great performance that you've had on the show, right. uh, the medical aspect, which is huge. But what about right. the other green technology as far as energy, solar, things, things like that? Yeah, well, you know, we, we've had those kind of people coming on to the show as well. And just basically giving people a, a way to, you know, think about something differently. In other words, you know, you don't need, you don't need oil and gas to heat your home. You can actually do something called geothermal, for instance, which is, again, and I'll, I'll try to explain this as best as I can from a layman's uh, point of view. What it, uh, what it does is they take two tubes, they shoot it in the ground uh, underneath a, a, certain, a certain level, I guess, and what it does is underneath that level, it's, it's pretty much warm or something of that nature. And then what you can do is you can shoot this water back into your home. And with a flip of a switch, you can heat your home. And then what I think happens in the summertime is it, uh, there's a reverse process. And then it, it keeps the air um, at a certain temperature. And that way, you don't have to use air conditioning anymore. Which is totally environmentally friendly. Correct. And it's, but it's the problem with it, just like anything else like this, it's new technology. But it costs a lot of money. It costs you about ten thousand dollars to install that in your house. Well, the way the, the way LIPA keeps raising our rates, but that may know, be a bargain well, soon. Well, it is <laughs> in terms of the overall effect. But when you're you know you're just doing that one shot, that's why people haven't been able to get it because it's expensive. Right. But over over a time, sure, that's what you want to do. You want to use that kind of a technology. You don't want to you don't want to keep spending money on oil and gas because it's just. It's outrageous. Yeah, besides being expensive, not yeah, clean. It's, and just, it's just ridiculous. What, what about the uh, cars and uh, hybrid technology they and have battery operation? Yeah, we, we've had all of those kind of people coming on to the show. And, you know, we, we had a guy who actually helped GM develop their... Um, their battery for their for their uh, for their cars. So you know it's it's been it's been an exciting ride so far. So I wonder if we talk about Tesla and how wonderful it is. Can we each get one for free? I wish maybe, we could. Maybe maybe they can give us one and I'll, <laughs> I'll talk about it all freaking day. I, I like a we Tesla. Could. That's a very nice car. <laughs> it's a very nice car. It's very smooth. It's, it, it it has no 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 noise at all. I love the Tesla. Yeah, nice I, car. I wish I could get that. <laughs> right. So let me ask you this. I mean, so you're doing this, and and I know when we spoke about it, you know, when I first reached out to you, I could tell you were passionate. Uh, oh yeah. About this, you you really you just love doing it. But can you Absolutely. make a living? Can you make a living doing this? Well, you see, the radio show by itself, you wouldn't be able to. The the good news is, like I said, I just got syndicated, and this show is going to be in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and after that in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, now, Raleigh, North Carolina is going to be on seventy-two point nine. 
uh, by the name uh, a young lady picked me up by the name of Lakeisha Melvin and I thank God for that and then Clark Garrison in Atlanta Georgia is picking me up very soon so the show is going to start getting syndicated now and we're going to be heard all over the country very soon great so, so what, what's goodness. the name of the show it's called Percival's Place Percival's Place Percival's Place and could people what about online can people uh, get yes, it on YouTube I, I or actually I actually have a talk zone um, radio station as well it's called talk zone and it's Percival's Place on talk zone and you can just Put that down to talkzone.com and you can you can uh, see the show as well. Right, then get your show. So we're gonna actually we're gonna close out the uh, show with some of your uh, some clips from your show and we'll show that on there to the audience. And uh, okay. you know if you live in uh, Nassau County, what's the uh, station number? It is ninety five point nine FM and twelve forty AM. I don't know you're on both. Yeah, we're on so both. It's on, the, it's on the same time on both. On the same time. But I, you got a good voice. I got to imagine you sound better on FM, thank you. right? Thank you very much. I, right? I, I, I get that <laughs> a lot. But yes, I, it is it is a wonderful thing to be on FM and AM. That way, you know, the show can be syndicated a lot easier. Oh, okay. So that was the beauty of that. And we can be heard in Brooklyn, Queens, and all of Long Island. What about if people want to advertise on your show? Do you take advertisers? Absolutely. That is, that's how I make my living. Okay. So we, we, we definitely want people to come and advertise. Um, we, we, we can do commercials. And we can do, um, you know, I can, you know, put in a plug for it for the uh, for the company or whatever cases. Right, Absolutely. Great. Percival, thanks so much for coming Thank on. I, I appreciate the Thank time. You. And uh, like I said, it, it was a great show, it wasn't? You know, I, was I flick, appreciate flicking that. through the channels, and uh, right. I got lucky enough to, to come yes, across it. And uh, it was a you. great topic about the you know the doctors that that really well, caught my attention. Well, Gary, we, we'll have to have you on the show. You know, so I don't know what, I can, what, what am I going to offer? Well, I, can't, right. I can't cure the world of cancer. Okay. I, you know, I sell dog toys for a living, and I, and I, and I fight family court. Is that green? You know well, that. oh, wait a minute. If people would stop going to family court, they wouldn't spend as much money on gas well, and the environment. But, Gary, we can have you on that show, and you can talk about that service that you give to the community. Okay. So I would love to have you on the show. Hey, thanks so much. You're and, very and welcome. I'm Gary Jacob, and thank you for joining us at Long Island Backstory. Gary Jacobs and Long Island Backstory, winner of the Huntington Lodge No. 124's 2018 Community Service Award in recognition of the efforts to offer an alternative access to news stories of interest to all Long Islanders. Long Island Backstory is made possible in part by Americans for Legal Reform, the oldest, most successful legal group in the world, P.O. Box 2679, Huntington Station, New York, 11746, telephone 631-421-6390, website, Americans, the number 4, LegalReform.com. I tried Oxy at a couple of parties. I didn't know it'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. <sighs> Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. I don't remember how it started. Oh. Oh 
are back and forth. Victory. Fumble. Repeat. It always came back. <laughs> Okay, here we go, throw it! <laughs> yeah. You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Nice. <laughs> Red hat. Oops. <laughs> Red shirt, blue shirt, <laughs> yellow shirt, oops. <laughs> yellow pants, red pants, green pants, oops. <laughs> They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. 